click on record. We are recording. Uh, as people jump in, they can just kind of pick up, uh, go from there, and then we'll we'll post this to uh, the Indiana First um, website. Um, Logan, did you have uh, screen things that you wanted to share or? Okay. Nope. Okay, then I don't necessarily need to make you the host. Um, uh, there is an exciting poll that I will be putting out here in a little bit. So uh, if, you, um, if you're if you on the call, you'll get to vote on a little poll. I'm gonna try to do these each time. I, it was a new feature I just learned how to use, so kind of excited to try it. But anyway, so tonight uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about rules, but not any rules interpretations of deep space. For that, you need to go to the first website. I'm gonna bring it up right now so everybody can see it. Go to share. So if you can see my screen, when you go to first inspires and you go to programs, first robotics competition, you can go to game and season, Right here where it says season materials, there's all sorts of great resources here, including the Q&A system, which is currently open, and you go there, and it's interpretations of rules, and people have asked different rules, and you can submit questions for rules, or questions about the rules, but then also the other important thing are the team updates, uh, and they just put out team update number three today, and so this is, again, those of you who are new to FIRST, the rules will evolve with, uh, as we progress forward and may even change uh, and evolve as the season goes on once competition starts. So uh, anyway, with that then, I'm going to pass things off to Logan Byers. Logan is uh, one of our uh, head referees uh, here in Indiana. And... Uh, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about some of the pitfalls that our teams might uh, fall into and some specific things maybe to watch out for. So, Logan, take it away. Yep. So, uh, thank you, Chris, uh, for having me and inviting me to the call. Um, as uh, Chris said, uh, I've been refereeing now since I graduated high school way back in 2006. Um, so now going on probably a dozen years as a referee. Um, for this year's game, it's pretty straightforward. Um, this year is very simple compared to previous years, um, which is kind of nice. Um, most of the rules are pretty straightforward. Um, some of the big gotchas uh, have already been covered. So one that was... Uh, uh, updated today was multiple possession of game pieces. So uh, definitely go take a look at today's uh, team update um, about multiple possession. Um, other than that, make sure you're looking at rules around defense. Um, this year there are limitations on how many robots can be on the opposite side of the field and what they uh, when they can play defense during the uh, during the match. So uh, there's certain game elements they can't touch. So, for example, uh, they can't touch the rocket during the last 30 seconds um, when you're playing defense. So um, this year, there's also a weird one with G9 and G10, which is the uh, only one robot playing defense. Um, there's basically ways that they can escalate. Um, if they're done in combination. So keep an eye out for that. I don't think we'll see it too often, but something to definitely uh, go through and read and make sure you understand. As far as the robot rules, they're pretty, pretty boilerplate year to year. Um, make sure that you're reading up on bumper rules. Those ones are big gotchas almost every year. Um, your robot size, your robot weight, uh, those have changed this year actually. So uh, keep an eye on those. Uh, we actually get five more pounds for our robot this year, um, and the um, size constraints are a little different. You can only be up to four feet tall this year to start your robot. So, 
So I don't have any other specific examples. Chris pretty much covered it. Make sure that if you have any questions to go to the first Q&A system. Um, outside of that, there are plenty of other resources. So Chief Delphi is a good example uh, to go and not get an official answer, but see what everyone else is thinking, how the game will be played, uh, how the rules will be uh, implemented, um, what kind of designs teams are, are kind of circulating towards. Um, Robot in Three Days is a good resource. Uh, they just wrapped up this week. So you'll see it a lot more uh, YouTube and uh, uh, other resources that are coming out with those. Hopefully uh, they've documented them well this year. So. Oh, I'm gonna ask a few questions, Logan, and then maybe that might spur a few others. Um, yeah. So during qualification matches or, or even during the playoffs, um, I'm a mentor and I've seen something egregious or I've seen something maybe that wasn't called or I feel like something happened to us that should have been called. Uh, do I come down and talk to you? How do we handle that? Yep. So um, obviously one of the big rules about uh, interaction with referees is it has to be one student that comes down and contests the call. Um, so if you do see something that's, you know, out of the ordinary or that you think was called wrong, uh, send one of your students over to the scores table. There's what we call a question box. Um, in Indiana, we've got one for each side. So there's a red uh, box that we put on the floor uh, on one side and then blue on the other side. Um, send one student. Um, you can also come down and kind of be within earshot, kind of hear the conversation that's going on. Um, but we obviously don't want to be basically using the student as a puppet um, and talking to you through the student. That's, that's not something that we, that as referees like to do. Um, we like to talk to the students, get them to uh, open up and talk about what they saw during the match and their interpretation of the rule, so. Okay, very good. Yeah, I kind of set you up for that one. The, yep. the question box is definitely a big one. I think a lot of folks uh, might not know it. Do you, uh, I know there's some teams that um, during the course of build season, in order to prepare their students, uh, will do rules quizzes, uh, mm -hmm. like on Saturday at lunch or during the week, you know, the, during the week's building up. Do you have any other maybe advice or some best practices you've heard? Or, or there might be some teams out there that you've seen that maybe year in, year out, seem to really know the rules. What are they doing differently? Or are they holding team kids accountable somehow? Or I mean, it's, it's yeah. so fun to read the rules. Yeah, um, rules tests are a great way to um, make sure the students have read the rules and understand what's going to be called. Um, there are plenty of resources out there. There are plenty of teams that are, that are building those, uh, either on their own or using ones that are out there on Chief Delphi, uh, other online forums. Uh, you know, if you guys are interested in any of those resources, uh, definitely, you know, ask Chris, myself, Renee, uh, we can, we can uh, find those resources for you and get you hooked up. Um, sure. But yeah, I, I would say that's probably the best avenue um, is, you know, having your team, especially your drive team, uh, the teams that are, you know, your students that are going to be out there on the field participating in matches, making sure that they're aware of all the different rules that are out there. You know, it's not just during the, the, the match itself, there's things that go on before and after the match that are also crucial. Um, so for one, one that's a big one that we have almost every year is we have to wait for the field to be green before we walk onto the field. Uh, that way, you know, the field uh, staff make sure that the field's okay for people to go out onto uh, before students and mentors come out there to grab their robots. Um, the light locations are different this year. They're not on the driver's station. They're going to be on the rockets themselves. Um, so it changes year to year. It's always a, a learning curve trying to figure out where those lights are, uh, when they turn green. Um, so just keep that um, in mind. You know, get, make yourself familiar, familiar with it when you get to competitions um, and keep an eye out for those kinds of things. And that, uh... I step out on the field before the green light goes on. Uh, my team incurs a yellow card. 
This year, or so last year, they implemented a great system. There's actually a verbal warning first. Okay. Um, so we get to talk to the team, say, hey, by the way, the next time you do this, then you'll get a card. In the past, it was just a, a card. Um, to explain the card system, it's similar to soccer. There's a yellow and a red card. A yellow card's just a warning. A red, unfortunately, gets your team disqualified from the match. Um, Not from the whole competition. Was, yeah, just for that match. Just the one match that you were in, right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so your yeah. score and any ranking points you may have earned are wiped out. But the other two robots on your alliance, unless the yellow card was applied across the board, it's just you, the other two are fine. Correct. Right, okay. Yep. Right. But in, yep. it, now, so, is it um, in playoffs, cards are issued across the alliance? Yes. So they updated the wording this year um, to make sure that we didn't have another uh, Chessy Champs, which was an off-season event that had a little bit of a hiccup with the card system. But the way the cards are implemented, if one team gets a yellow card in playoffs, it applies to the whole alliance. So um, if Team A goes out and gets a yellow card for one thing, Team B goes and gets a second yellow card, they get a red card because of accumulating two yellows. So definitely so in playoffs. Stack, those stack during the playoffs and they, they accumulate. Yeah. Okay. They can stack during – qualifications as well but it's only for that team and that i mean i've never seen a team go that crazy but okay and yeah so it's i think there's just certain things that maybe teams uh trip up on and and you know it, it i don't think kids maliciously mean to step out on the field before the light goes green it might just be one of those things that uh, of course also the robot's broken and they're like oh it's tipped over and yep. the match is over and they want to run out and, and pick it up you know, just make sure you, you talk to your uh, team beforehand, right? And just say, relax, your safety is more important than what's happened to the robot. Yeah. Uh, Frank says that all the time during, you know, he mentioned it during kickoff. Nothing that we do in first is ever worth losing, you know, losing a limb or, you know, risking your personal safety for. You know, this is just for fun. It's a competition. Um, it's not worth, you know, risking your health or safety for it. So. Right. Um, so we kind of went over the yellow card, red card system, which is good, uh, for teams to understand how those work. Um, as, as head referee, you're primarily enforcing the, the, the competition rules. Um, but there are also event rules. Um, mm -hmm. do referees get involved in the event rules or, or how do those work? So as our, as our mentors that are here, um, are reading through the administrative handbook, um, if they feel like there's teams, you know, saving seats or Wi-Fi broadcasting or things like that, who do they go to? Who do they talk to? Um, there are two people that they should go to. So uh, they can come to myself or really any volunteer. Make sure that a volunteer is aware of what's going on. Um, volunteers know their chain of command and who to contact uh, if they're notified of some rule violation. Um, the other person that you can contact is the event coordinator. Um, the event coordinator should be able to uh, enforce the event rules. Um, the other thing that is a uh, resource for teams is a non-medical incident report form, uh, which is now online this year. It's a Google form from first. So it, while there's nothing that you know we may be able to do at the event as far as you know issuing cards or um enforcing a rule at the event uh it's still nice to make first uh aware of those events that way if they're starting if they're starting to see a track record of it uh they can act on it so uh, just know that the non-medical incident form is something that uh teams have as an avenue okay and i'd like also say popped up. <laughs> this is renee's uh, expertise area so renee you got something to add i do so um the online uh, event documentation form, the non-medical incident report, I think it's fantastic. I'm so glad that first put it online for teams, but also 
um, if something is going on at the event, we're not necessarily guaranteed to get an immediate report of what's going on if you submit that directly to First Headquarters. And so we highly recommend you also connect with the event manager at the event, um, who could also potentially help make sure that you have internet access to the forum um, while being aware of the situation so that if anything else might be going on or if we need to like resolve an issue like an electrical problem with too many crock pots and one outlet, you know, we're actually able to do that. So. I just wanted to mention that to teams that, um, you know, the event managers are there to kind of help facilitate those questions. And if at any point in time, you kind of need to get to the event manager, but you don't know where they are, how to connect with them, uh, you can also connect with Pit Admin, who is always consistently at the Pit Admin table, and they have access to a radio who can connect to, you know, our event manager, our volunteer coordinators, et cetera. So we are here to make sure that you and your students have a great time at the events. Um, and we want to make sure that, you know, everyone's safe and good to go. Thanks, Renee. Thanks. Yeah, I know uh, things happen. Um, it, we fortunately, uh, the years I've been a mentor at, at first events and, and also now work for Indiana First, um, really haven't seen anything too horrendous. But um, I do know occasionally, uh, you know, you know, Sometimes kids and adults uh, can unfortunately set their gracious professionalism aside and and be a little non GP as we call it in first. So uh, rookie mentors out there, gracious professionalism, you know, is, is our one of our highest values that we uphold. And uh, and sometimes, you know, I guess we, you know, sort of like sportsmanship. Sometimes people can be unsportsmanlike and uh, people get upset. Uh, there are avenues for recourse. Um, I would say don't take it into your own hands. I'd say if there is something like that, you address it immediately with, you know, you can find me if I'm at the event. I'll be at two of our three district events this year. Uh, you know, you can find the event coordinator. Just, you know, ask a volunteer or go to the volunteer table. Uh, it's usually near the entrance of our building, so it'll be a check-in table. It's usually manned the whole time. You can say, who's the event manager or event coordinator? And the, they may even have a walkie-talkie and be able to track that person down for you. Uh, and, and get resolution to your issues. But then again, if it's a rules question, um, have a student um, approach Logan. And, um, and we're really lucky here uh, in Indiana, we have a couple of really great head referees uh, that are very approachable. Uh, we'll listen to the students and, and hear them out and you know, give them a straight up answer on what's going on. And so, and, and I've, I've been privy to a lot of those conversations as, as an MC and, uh, listening in on, on what goes on in the question box and um, and sometimes the kids you know they they don't like the call but I think our referees do a good job of explaining it uh, uh, to them they might not like the result but I think at least they felt like they were you know being treated fairly uh, so uh, big thing is read the rules uh, keep up on the updates um, and again that there have been times when those when a rule change could happen you'll be at a Friday Saturday event and a rule change will come out Friday night and Saturday they'll make announcements and they'll talk to the drive teams and, and we'll do our best to get that out there. Uh, but it's happened before. It doesn't happen a lot. Uh, it happened during aerial assist. Um, and it was a necessary thing that needed to happen, but uh, it, at certain competitions, it changed the entire flow of the game um, from one night to the next. But but so I just say, stay on top of that. Um, watch for the, the little pitfall rules and make sure your students absolutely know what can bring on a yellow card, what can bring on a red card. Uh, and look at where, uh, like Logan said, look at where those fouls can occur on the field uh, and, and just do your best to avoid those situations. Um, because as a new team, one of the things that you, right out of the gate, your team, or even as a reactivated team, any team, even a veteran team, if you're not in the top eight, then you're in a position to where you want to try to get your team picked. And if it comes down to two robots that are about the same, but one's got several fouls stacked up on them and the other doesn't, the team's going to go with the robot that doesn't have the fouls stacked up on them because apparently that other drive team – Either one is purposely not playing by the rules or doesn't know the rules and that'll cost them playoffs. So those are really important things to keep in mind. Um, anything else we've uh, missed Logan in terms of 
we talked about going on the field. We talked a little bit about um, the yellow card, red card, some of the general rules. Anything else that we've missed out on, maybe? Or I suppose um, we take questions. Yeah, I think we covered a, a majority of it. Um, I think we can probably open it up to questions and see if there's anything specific that people have. Okay. I think Renee has a question. I do. Uh, what happens if my robot isn't working and I can't get it to the field to like field it for a match? Should I just like skip it and keep all my kids in the pit working on it or what should I do? Yep. So um, there's a specific rule about um, attending your matches. So if your robot's inspected, um, you're expected to show up for your matches. You don't have to bring your robot. You just have to send one team's uh, team student uh, representative to the field uh, to basically participate in the match. Um, so again, once you've been inspected, you're expected to send at least one person out with the uh, with your team for your match. Um, what's, the, if you're what's the penalty on that, Logan, if you don't? So if you don't, it gets your team red carded from that match. Okay. So uh, the flip side of that is if you haven't been inspected, uh, you're not expected to participate in the match and we don't you know, expect you to participate at all, you'll unfortunately be disqualified from the match. Um, but if you do show up to a match and you haven't been inspected and you participate in the match, your whole alliance gets red carded, which is much, much worse. Yeah. And I don't, you may have seen that before. I've never seen that before, but uh, um, not in Indiana. We haven't yeah. had that happen in Indiana yet. And our district events are, are between, you know, 32 and 40 teams. You know, I think at a regional event where you have maybe 60 teams and teams coming in at the last minute. And, um, but one of the things we will cover uh, in a future call is going to be the whole, what do I do when I get to an event? Uh, so from the minute you pull up your trailer or truck or van or whatever you've got to, you know, getting inspected, getting your robot out of the bag, uh, all those things uh, uh, in order to, you know, to be ready to, uh, to officially play. So, so like that, that'll help with that. Uh, Renee, you got something? Yeah. It doesn't happen in Indiana because our volunteers are amazing. I mean, so the volunteers everywhere are amazing and maybe I'm slightly biased, but. I'm just saying. We, we have great lead robot inspector and other volunteer robot inspectors that do come around. And I know um, uh, last year, as my first year really as program director, uh, going to the Penn event, at the, it was the first one of us for the year, um, our uh, robot inspectors do a fantastic job of seeking out the rookie teams um, and making sure that they're kind of, you know, as they arrive, that they really kind of spend some time with them and get them checked through. Now, last year we only had two. But, um, and so this year with, with seven, they won't all be at one event, but you know, we'll have four or five maybe at one event. So there'll be a little bit more of that. Uh, but yeah, no, that's, that's good. Do, uh, I've got everybody on mute. There is a chat feature. If you're on your computer, uh, feel free to chat. Uh, any questions you might have? Um, I'm gonna unmute everybody, which might cause some chaos here in a second. Um, but, uh, feel free to kind of chime in if you've got a question. Uh, I'm going to leave Danny muted though because nobody wants to listen to Danny. I had a I had a question on G4. Yeah. Um. So there's a new uh, yellow text in the rule that says talks about releasing all game pieces as a yellow card. So I guess I if if Logan if you have an interpretation on this if you have any insight it, it sounds like if it sounds like my robot could get stuck between a rock and a hard place if somehow i accidentally get you know multiple game pieces wedged in my robot and then i can't let them go because that's also a yellow card so if you could maybe explain some of the or give some insight there that'd be helpful yeah um so the way the word we are ruling the rule is written right now let me pull up the actual writing uh so g4 is robots may not ex have extended or repeated control of more than one game piece at a time either directly or transitively through other objects so violating this rule is a foul per additional game piece now the cards come in after this so if greater than two at a time and the this wording was just updated at the 
uh, Team Update 3, which just came out about an hour and a half ago. So if you have possession of more than two, you get a yellow card. So if you have three or more game pieces on your robot, you're getting a yellow card. The way that's or the, the new rule is written, it says if your robot releases all game pieces, that gets you a second yellow card. So the way the rule is currently written, if you possess more than two, so if I have three or more game pieces on my robot, I can get rid of two of them. I'm still getting a yellow card, but I can get rid of two of them. If I get rid of all game pieces off my robot before the end of the match, then I'm going to get a red card for that match, is the way it is currently written. If you're going to be legal about it, it's not very well written at all. So if I have possession of multiple game pieces, it says if I release all the game pieces, I get a yellow card. I agree it's not a very well written rule right now. Do you think the idea behind that is they don't want you scoring a bunch? Because I guess if I have three, I get rid of two of them. I drive around the field for a little bit. I go score that one that I have now. It, it, I've still released all of them. I'm kind of curious how this might be, you, you know, put into practice. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, none of us know. Only the first HQ knows what they actually want to have called right now. I can only give you my interpretation and whatever answers they're going to give on the Q and a probably aren't going to be very concrete at the moment. I'm sure they'll probably update this every time, every week, uh, until competitions start. The way I would call this right now is I would only call the cards if you have more than two. Well, and then a practical uh, for, for uh, new mentors out there who might end up being drive coaches, um, you know, a practical situation would be, you know, maybe you do get a panel stuck in your robot and you're trying to shake it off and you can't shake it off. Um, you know, don't, uh, what you don't want to do is encourage your team to start driving that robot anywhere near where, uh, the game balls, the cargo is, then mm -hmm. what you do is you yell at your alliance and say, we're going to go play defense and, you know, go get in a, go, just go get in somebody's way and make sure yeah. you're not, you know, controlling other pieces. So there, there are some strategy things there. I mean, if you do end up, cause it, it happens in every game, uh, you know, two years ago with it was two years ago, Steamworks. We had a lot of, of teams get gears stuck in their robots um, or other, you know, pieces. And it seems like every year there, there could be something. The, the Frisbee game, there were Frisbees getting stuck in robots, and then teams could only have four, and all of a sudden we're picking up a fifth because one was jammed in their shooter. Uh, so just keep in mind that, that that's what a drive coach is there for, to make sure that – your drive coach knows the rules thoroughly and is paying attention to the strategical situation and, um, and can make adjustments for the team on the field. But um, it is 6.30, maybe a, lot, a couple of questions. Um, I don't want to keep everybody too long, especially uh, Logan who agreed to do this, but maybe with just a couple other questions. Um, we are recording this. So this is, you know, this will be a resource you guys will have access to in a little, uh, a little while. Any other questions? So, um, hey guys, this, uh, yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Hey, this is this is Lyle Oxley. Hey, I'm oh. driving, so sorry for the background noise. Hey, That's question: a During a competition, once you've been inspected, and you've maybe had to make some changes or whatever after that, you've bolted something on or taken something off. What What's a good rule for when you should be reinspected? Yeah. Um. So if it's like for like. You shouldn't have to be reinspected. If it's something minor like changing a bolt, uh, you shouldn't be reinspected. If you're changing the functionality of some part of your robot, get reinspected. If you're not sure, just go ask a, a, a robot inspector. And the worst thing it does is it takes them five minutes to look at the change and go, yeah, we're good with that. Um, so, for the most part, if it's, a, if it's a major change or if it's not just simply replacing something on your robot, just go ask a robot inspector and get, get yourself re-inspected. So really, for the most part, they're just going to look at the change and see if there's any 
any change to what they originally uh, inspected on your robot. Well, and Thank you. on a side note, at all of our events in the pits, at one end of the pits, there'll be a, a table called pit admin. It's staffed the entire time. And so if you're thinking, well, how do I find a robot inspector? You just go to pit admin and say, we, we're, you know, team FRC, whatever, give them the number, say, we need a robot inspector at our pits, please. And, uh, and that'll happen fast because they've got the radios. You don't have to go hunting them down or know where they are. Um, and and that they'll get them there, and that, and that's true with with pit admin with so many other things. You forget a tool, you need a certain kind of bolt or a chain breaker or something. You go to pit admin, and they'll put out an announcement to all the teams and say, you know, hey team, whatever needs a chain breaker or needs uh, a wheel or uh, and teams will just come rushing to the rescue. So uh, whenever in doubt and you're in the pits and you need something, um, you can ask pit admin to kind of help you. But yeah, um, it yeah. usually after the after qualifications to start, robot inspectors are just waiting for something to do. So, well, yeah, uh, and we usually they usually take their hats off and go do other things, and we usually just have a few fewer. But then, but then if they do get yeah. selected for the playoffs, they do have to get reinspected, right? So that's actually <laughs> that's a a good mythbuster here. Okay. Um, actually, there's no rule that says we have to reinspect robots before playoffs. Okay. So, so we don't, but do we? We formally or informally we do. Okay. For the most part, we go and we check and, you know, uh, we do a spot check on weight and see if there's any big change from your inspection weight. Uh, kind of as a, hey, did you really change anything? Has something, you know, magically appeared on your robot that we've maybe missed? Um, but for the most part, it's just a, a quick once over and a reway. Um, but there is no official first, hey, you have to be reinspected to play in playoffs. Okay. Well, very good. Um, maybe time for one other question. Thanks, Lyle, for that question. And make sure you're driving carefully. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't see any other questions. Logan, thank you so much for being here tonight. Uh, yep. I really appreciate your time. Um, Logan, which, uh, do you know which events you'll be head refing this year? Yeah. So I am only head refing the Center Grove event, but I will be a referee at all the other Indian events. So okay. great to me at all of our districts. Great. So if you're there and you, you've got a question, uh, yeah. seek out uh, Logan, and uh, but don't yell at him because he's really nice and, uh, and he, he doesn't get paid enough to get yelled at, um, <laughs> big fat zero. Uh, without any other questions or anything, um, I think we'll end the call tonight. Thank you everybody. Um, I hope that all of you have been out there working hard on your robots. Uh, I know some of you have had some weird weather. Uh, I, I would say right now, a lot of our teams in week two are definitely at this point prototyping. Um, probably have gotten beyond uh, how they're going to play the game or strategy. They've gotten beyond kind of what they think the robot's going to need to have and are starting to prototype um, either drivetrain ideas or, or manipulation ideas. Uh, and then we'll soon go into um, actual design of those pieces um, and do design reviews. Uh, we'll have a lot more coming up on these Tuesday night calls. Uh, things we've got uh, how to register students in the dashboard. We're going to do one on... Um, uh, we've got a gal uh, from uh, 868 who she's a she's awesome at planning like food and you know how to feed your team and how to travel and be frugal uh, and get that done um, uh, nice especially going to Detroit uh, we've got how to navigate an FRC event uh, so we've got a lot of calls coming up if you've got questions or you'd like a topic for a call let me know uh, and I can go out and seek some uh, some help. I think one of the other calls that will happen also is gonna be based around strategy. So uh, bring in, we might bring in a couple of mentors, uh, Andy Baker or maybe even Chris Fultz or somebody to come in and talk about how do you scout at FRC events and uh, how do you get scouted and what are teams really, when the teams come to your pit and say, start asking you all sorts of questions about your robot, why are they doing that? And why aren't you? So. Renee, anything else before we hang up? Uh, 
thought, yeah, I was just wondering if we could maybe schedule a discussion on awards, unless you listed that before talking about how awesome Kathy is. So yeah, let's definitely do a, an awards conversation. Um, make sure that your team is looking at, uh, again, on the FRC um, website, uh, when you go to, um, when you go to First Inspires, hopefully if you can see my screen, and you go to Programs, First Robotics Competition, again, you can go to Game and Season, and right here is a section on awards. I would definitely pour over these and start to see, uh, start to read and understand uh, what they're about, and then how can your team uh, prepare themselves or position themselves to be considered for uh, one of these awards? For our rookie teams, of course, there are rookie specific awards that you're eligible for that other teams aren't. Uh, there'll be some awards that you won't be eligible for this year. Uh, for example, the Chairman's Award. Uh, but there are some other awards here, this Team Spirit Award. Um, uh, also make sure you understand things like the Dean's List Award that you're gonna be nominating students for that. We can go into that much later, but know what these are because ultimately in the district system, these awards also translate into points and points are what gets you to advance. Uh, and so uh, definitely don't overlook these. Uh, and if I were you as a, as a mentor, uh, what I would honestly do is make sure you put together a couple of students whose job it is to know these awards forwards and backwards and teach the rest of your team the awards forwards and backwards. So uh, I think that's it. I'm heading out. I hope everybody has a fantastic evening. Um, don't forget if you got any other questions or concerns or anything, feel free to email me. Uh, and I think that's about it. All right. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Logan. Thanks for yeah, doing this, guys. See, see you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.